So what are we gonna do today? I'm going to do another texture piece and I'm going to utilize my catalyst wedge because I love this thing, but it does a really, really, really nice job at blending paint, especially on texture, I find. It does it on a great job on regular canvas too, but on texture specifically, and because it's like nice and soft and pliable and it can get like really into the grooves and you can go like nicely over top of the texture and it kind of like just drags the paint across and kind of attaches itself to all the lumps and bumps of the texture, which is really cool. I've seen other people mistakenly go, oh, I'm using a catalyst wedge and they pull out this thing. No, this is a cake decorating tool. It is different. And it is hard and plastic and doesn't get as nice into the texture. So you need one of these. I'm gonna use a very muted color palette. Not really muted. I guess it's more like a neutral, minimal color palette. My new favorite, of course, with any texture painting is Amsterdam Van Dyke Brown mixed with Ginger Snap from Prison Pour. The two of these are very beautiful together, yes. Yes, they are. My favorite dirty water mixture happens to be Phthalo Blue by Amsterdam and Oxide Black by Amsterdam. Now, I don't know that you could substitute a different Phthalo Blue. You probably could, but I use Phthalo Blue from Amsterdam. I don't know if Liquitex or whatever brand you use is the same hue as Phthalo Blue from Amsterdam. And this one is fully opaque, sorry, fully transparent. So again, I don't know if all Phthalo Blues are. I've never done the research. I really don't know. Oh, I haven't decided. It's either gonna be Bohemian Sea or Midnight Shadow or a combination of both. Both of them are by Prison Pour. I love these because I can use them directly out of the bottle. Um, I don't have to do any pouring medium or make sure. I mean, you could water them down and make it more of a, of a wash over top. But what I like about these is they're kind of like thick. So I can take them and I can use it right out of the container and it, spreads really nicely with my catalyst wedge on and on with the catalyst wedge I know but so I'm leaning towards the bohemian sea more though than I am the uh midnight shadow I, I think this is darker than what I'm looking for but you know who knows when I get there I get there and we'll see what happens I wanted to do um some type of like a gold leaf on top of the texture in certain parts but I think I'm gonna to attempt to utilize Solar Flare also by Prison Pour. And if you haven't guessed, I'm a color art affiliate. There's an affiliate code down below. You can get 15% off all your color art products utilizing my code. So after you watch me paint, if you happen to like it, feel free to use my code and get yourself some fancy Prison Pour. And of course, primary elements, you got, they got pigments and other stuff too. And mica flakes, if you've ever missed me do some paintings with mica flakes, you can check this out. <laughs> it looks really cool. I love them. I haven't used them in a while. Maybe I have to like mix them in with texture paint sometime. Hmm. Anyway, what am I going to do? So that's my neutral muted color palette. I wanted to do like a circle, like a wreath kind of thing on a canvas, something that you could actually like hang in your house like all year long. <laughs> so it's really not a wreath. It's just a circle of texture. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm done. My name is Tiffany Remind. Welcome to my channel. Meet me down on the canvas and uh, let's uh, make something. Okay, so here's the plan. I want to do a circle, but first I needed to find the center. I have, you know, not found the center before and when I hung the painting, it looked kind of off. So this is a 60 by 60 centimeter. Uh, <laughs> I'm struggling with the tape measure here, but so the middle obviously is 30 centimeters and I want to make sure from both sides that it's in the middle. So I'm just going to double check my spot. And then because I don't have a, whatever that thing is, a protractor or whatever, you know, that's large enough. I'm just gonna kind of measure and draw dots, 25 from the center, and then just join the circle around, you know, like you, I don't know, I think I learned this like when I was in kindergarten, who knows, but good enough for now for what I need. And then I'm gonna add some texture. To create the texture though, I'm just going to use regular hole speckle, but I want the texture to go in multiple directions and be very dimensional. So I'm gonna do the outside of the circle in one direction, and then I'm going to follow the circle uh, with the palette knife here with the spackle. And then eventually I'm going to do the center of the circle going in another direction. And then you'll kind of get the concept, at least what I've got in my mind, as to what I'm trying to create here. Um, and I want various thickness of texture as well. So just keep watching and I'll, yeah, <laughs> see how it goes.
right, so we're just gonna let this dry and then we'll start adding some color. Okay, now that the canvas is fully dry, I'm going to use my catalyst wedge. I know, I keep talking about it. And as I mentioned previous, I might use either one of these or both, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I guess we'll find out. And of course, this is the dirty water, which I discovered by accident. Yeah, and this is my other favorite, of course, Van Dyke Brown, Ginger Snap, love, love, love. Yeah, can't say enough about it. Um, I know for the other people, they've always made washes and stuff. For me, I kind of just stumbled upon this. I'm not so artsy. And because I was cleaning my brushes and I just loved the color. And when I just by accident wiped it over the top of the canvas, see how runny it is? Hmm. Fluid, art, consistencies out the door. And I'm just gonna wash it over top of the entire canvas. This canvas has already been pre-gessoed because I don't want it to absorb all of the paint that I'm gonna put on top of it. You know, it'll get sucked in and then it won't go as far. So that's what I've done. So let's just get started. So I'm gonna take my dirty water and just a regular old brush, nothing special, and go very slowly over top of the canvas because I want all the water and everything to, like, to sink into the ridges to add as much definition and depth into the texture as possible.
can see that I've got like half of it in the Van Dyke Brown ginger sap mixture and the other half is more of the darkish inky blue color and I wasn't sure kind of what color variation I wanted and I wanted the color to you know be variated throughout the entire circle not all one color but I wasn't sure once each layer kind of dried in between which direction I wanted to go in so that's kind of why I did like it a half and half in the beginning and then you know I'll come back and kind of blend it much more evenly as we keep going through the process of layering multiple layers. Yeah, I, you know, and I sometimes, one other thing to note, if you notice that it's kind of getting a little bit muddy, you know, it just stop. That's the beauty of this compared to just regular fluid, you know, acrylic pouring, I guess, is you can stop at any point in time, just let it dry and then come back in after and then just keep adding layers on top of your painting until you get the desired composition and color that you're after. And this was like a last minute decision to take the uh, yellow ochre, ochre. Uh, I never get that one right just to kind of quickly go over top, just to add again, another color variation and depth into the whole painting. Cause it kind of goes with everything else. So, and I had it sitting in front of me, so it was beckoning me to use it. And then, you know, once I added the yellow, I'm like, Hmm, let's add some gold to the top with the catalyst wedge. This is solar flare by prism pour. And I'm going to give you a bit of a close up as so you can see kind of how this is going on the top of this. Cause what I'm doing is very lightly, going over the very top of the ridges and adding a little bit of bling to this. And I really loved kind of what was happening here. And now I'm just gonna continue to play, adding my dirty water, various colors, more solar flare, um, you know, collecting water into like certain crevices and crannies of this whole thing until I get the final composition that I'm gonna hopefully end up liking. But at this point, I think I need to stop to just kind of let it dry. So now that it's dried, I can see kind of the color that I like, the color that I don't like versus the dark and that like the inky blue and the brown, and then kind of figure out what I love most about it. And then I'm going to continue to blend and add additional colors to make this a little bit more cohesive, not like a split like it is currently. <music> 